So in this video, I'm going to cover Eclipse debugging with GWT Super Dev Mode. And the web server is going to be a custom web server. So normally, GWT uses, or the debugger uses, a Jetty built-in Jetty web server. But in this one, I'm going to show how to use the custom web server. And it could be a Docker container. It could be a, a WT, uh, Eclipse WTP, or it could be a, just a plain web server. It could be a remote web server. It, the web server doesn't matter as long as the, the bits from the compiling process of the GWT compiling process get pushed to that war output path or servlet container or whatever server you're using. So let's get started. So we're going to look at our project. We're going to find a war container. And in this war container, I need to find out where the path to it because I'm going to go to the terminal and I'm going to start a simple web server. So I'm or let's go to the web server. And since I've already started the process once, it's in my history, so I up arrowed to it. And I'm going to use a Python to start a simple HTTP server in this directory, uh, this war directory here. Let's open it back up. We'll go there and we're going to start a simple web server. Now this could be a Docker container. It could be a Maven Tomcat. It could be a Maven um, instance of some server. It could be a Gradle or Ant or some Docker container or VM. I think I said some of those. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so now we started on port 8080. And we bound to all the IPs that are available on this Mac. So let's go to the GWT debugger. So in the GWT process, GWT debugger launchers, we don't have any created yet. So let's create one. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to the debug as. Now normally I could just start the running an external server, but this doesn't do all the defaults I really want to. Now this is something I think we'll fix upstream in the GWT Eclipse plugin. But in this case, I'm just going to launch a standard dev mode, class or standard super dev mode. Okay, it started, so I'm going to stop it. And this gives me all the arguments that I want to start. So we're going to use the dev mode entry point. The server is running on 8888. Uh, the GWT is super dev mode. Okay, so I'm going to go to the Arguments tab. I'm going to look for the bits that I want. Uh, okay, so the port, I'm going to change to 8080 because that's the web server is running on. And I'm going to add a bind address, 0, .0, 0.0.0.0. Now this could be any IP. It, what matters is, is it runs on IP of the web server. Now there's ways around this, and you can ask me offline for tips and tricks if you can't run super dev mode, but um, I won't cover that in this video. So the next important piece, uh, so the two important pieces are no server. Okay, there's no server added yet, so I'm going to add no server. No server. That means I'm not going to run the Jetty built-in server. I'm not going to run the built-in server. And the other piece is the war output path. So where do the compiled bits go from this process? It goes in the war output path. And so this war directory over here equals this war path. And so it's where I want it to go, and that's where my web server is running. And so it will um, compile the bits and put it into that directory. In the, the first bit that's most important is the no cache JS that bootstraps super dev mode. So we're going to hit apply and then I'm going to hit debug. And super dev mode has started and you can see it started on the web server address. Let's go look at that. Just confirm 0000 8080 and the welcome page or the index. So I double clicked on that. It opened up the war output path that's hosting and I'm going to hit send. Oh, there's an error. That's because I'm not using a servlet container that is actually controlling this or act using the servlet container creates an error because I'm running a plain web server. I'd have to run a Java servlet container to process the servlet. But in this case, it shows an example of how to run 
uh, how to use no server to run super dev mode on a custom web server. So let's review the bits of that process. I'm going to start, stop my little web server, plain web server. So here we have a project, we have a war, and it's not a managed war. A managed war would be a target directory with a build war. So we'd copy these contents and put them in some build directory. And that could be the remote our external server remote directory. And it could already have these bits. It doesn't matter. As long as super dev mode knows where to compile its, its important files. So let's review the launcher configuration. Go to debug configurations. And here we have my sandbox launcher under web application. I'm going to go to the arguments because this is what the launcher or Java process runs. Here we have the startup, which is my sandbox, the code server port, which is important in this process, but the bind address, which is important, which is tells me what server Nick is running on. The no server, which tells me it's a custom web server and the built-in web server is not going to be running. And the war output directory. And this compiles the bits. So if you use a Maven, it's going to go to the target output directory. And in that process, it copies the assets to that directory. And another process does that. And here's the GWT module, of course. And we can run debug. In this case, I didn't start the web server yet. And let's see what happens if I click on this. And nothing. So let's go to the web server and let's start up the web server. Once the server is started, we're going to reload. Oh, you can see that 888 showed up again. So let's fix that. Looks like a bug in the Eclipse application. We need to fix. I have to report that to the guy, guy doing it. So let me let me see. Which is me. <laughs> Looks like port has disappeared for some reason. So we'll just repair that. 8080. We're gonna hit apply. And then did my process start? Let's go to debug. It has started. So let's stop it and then rerun it. The launcher reruns. And you can see down here, okay, it started correctly. So I'll double click on that again. It's compiling because it found the nocast.js with the super dev mode um, compiler um, booted up with bootstrapped. So we'll say, okay, it doesn't work. That's correct because I'm not running a server container. So that concludes running super dev mode and the super dev mode on a custom web server using no server.